It's like pouring gasoline in a fire. You can read all the books about sharks you want, but this is the only way I know how to truly understand them. Sometimes when I'm in the water with mako sharks, they go after my feet. Who knows what could show up? A five, six, seven hundred pound mako could easily show up. We view them as ruthless killers. They are, but there's far more going on and I'm here to find out. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. miles off the coast of California. I am on the hunt, hoping to encounter, in my opinion, the most ferocious and noble savage of the open ocean, the shortfin mako shark. The ocean is vast, and these encounters are never guaranteed. So to improve my chances, we have brought one of the most experienced pro shark guides on the west coast, Shark White. If anyone can find them, he can. Schools will often accompany us on our journey, but as playful as they are, we are all in deep thought. This is truly dangerous and we know it. Actually, the big mangoes eat a lot of these dolphins. Uh, a lot of times when big mangoes have been caught, their bellies have been stuck with these dolphins that are out here. As you can see, they're very plentiful, uh, but still there's no telling what we're gonna find. Uh, just gonna give it my best shot and see what happens. is an ambush predator, but he also is the fastest shark in the world. So he can use his, his intelligence, his skills of hunting, and his speed to overcome prey. He usually attacks the tail, incapacitating his prey, and then finishes him off. Uh, blue sharks are plentiful out here. Uh, the blue sharks can get very aggressive. They're very prone to biting. I mean, you turn your back, and he's got onto you. Blue sharks are extremely attacking shark, in my opinion. They're always going for your ankles. You gotta keep your eye on them. And especially once I feed them, they just want a part of me. You know, they just, they'll come all around me like that. Okay, we're in the right area right now. We've got good water temperature. So I'm gonna go up on the tower, and see if I can find a kelp patch. this uh, small camera we actually have uh, an extended handle on it so you can get a two handle hold on it and you're not on the same axis and you're not rocking it back and forth this steadies it out also you can feed it to a shark if he's really aggressive you can put it right in his mouth or push him away with it if you have to and not really put your hands in as much danger as well it's got a wide angle lens on the front so we can get real close to the action and uh, you know really get some great stuff up close As you'll notice, uh, Manny doesn't say a lot until the action actually starts. He likes to stay really reserved, likes to conserve his energy, doesn't want to talk a lot, doesn't really want to talk about what might happen. He never does that. He wants the action to happen and then he'll come alive. So, 
It's very typical of Manny. All right, so what we're doing now is we're getting set up with the chum line. We're gonna go ahead and establish a chum line. Chuck White, our uh, pro guide here, uh, has this milk crate with floats on it. And basically he's gonna fill that with chum, let it trail behind the boat, and it'll set up a really strong chum line that'll drift out behind us. Uh, and then once we get some sharks coming in, then uh, we'll uh, get in the water. What fascinates me is not how we perceive sharks, but how they perceive us. Have they ever seen a human? Probably not. So they will behave based on instinct. But make us more intelligent than most sharks. There is more going on here, and I can sense it. Chuck, a big Mako coming in over there. Man, that's a killing machine. Look at the size of that thing. That's one of the biggest ones I've seen out here this year. Awesome. 60 miles off the coast of California, in water thousands of feet deep, I'm hoping to encounter the most lethal open water shark, the short fin Mako. Our pro guide, Shark White, has led us to this spot. Makos are highly intelligent compared to other sharks. And this is what fascinates me. I need to understand them. They are far more than just killing machines. Each encounter reveals a little more of their true nature. I feel that makos are very intelligent. Uh, the way they look at you, the way they act, uh, just how they live out here. So the mako is the fastest shark. He's very powerful. He's intelligent. He's a hunter of the open blue. And that combination, makes him a very lethal shark, extremely dangerous. What saves humanity from the Mako is the Mako lives far away at sea. It doesn't, it rarely will come near a beach or anything like that. People do not live in the world of the Mako. And that's what keep, keeps humanity separate from being exposed to the dangerous Mako shark. The chum puts out a slick and the slick will go out, depending on how long you've had it out, it could be out one, two, three miles. And that's just a scent that tells the fish there's something to eat. So they can come swimming in from either direction and work their way right up to the boat. And that's where we want to get where we can see them and see what size they are. If we are fishing, we can adjust the tackle to the size fish we see. So we're not fishing a 80 pound Mako with 130 pound test. It's really important for the cameraman to keep the chum and the smell of the fish and the bait off of us. We're paying attention to the shot. We're trying to get in there on Manny and really pay attention to what Manny's doing with the fish. It's okay for Manny to get the chum and the bait and everything on him. He's handling fish, he's doing all that, but he can handle himself. The cameraman really has a blind spot behind him, and uh, one of the jobs I've got today is to keep the sharks off of Quete while he's in real close. I'll have the luxury of being able to look around me a little bit, make sure if something's coming up underneath us, I can either keep it off Quete or at least warn him. And, uh, and at the same time, I'll be able to get a lot of great action myself with the sharks. It doesn't matter, we're gonna have shum all over us. I mean, in the tropics, when I don't use the hood, I spent three days picking pieces of barracuda and fish out of my hair is I'm chunking like this and I'm, I'm, when you, I'm a ball of blood in the water. I mean, I'm just, just blood showing all over me and everything and trying to bring the sharks to me. So I was like, don't even worry about that. You know, they're gonna be covered in it. It's gonna be on their suits, oil, everything. You know, as a matter of fact, the problem is we gotta let it clear up sometimes so they can video because it's too foggy. But uh, it, it gets all in here on me. But at least I got a hood now, so it won't be, you know, that bad. Well, a lot of people are the under, under the impression, especially people that uh, dive with sharks and work with them, it seems like the guy who has the fastest heart rate, the sharks always seem to go right for that person, especially if that person's agitated and they're not smooth in the water. Uh, when you got a lot of sharks around you like this, uh, what you want to do is really be smooth, calm, do not act like food. Do not back up. If a shark's coming at you, you want to go straight at it. Let it know you're dangerous too. Sharks aren't looking for a fight. They're looking for a meal. And so if you give them the impression that, hey, I'm going to hurt you if you come near me, generally, <laughs> there are no hard, fast rules out here. Generally, that will really help. And uh, you can kind of keep them off you and keep them at bay. But I imagine in this situation, you can work them up so much. And I know that's what Manny's uh, goal is, is to get these guys worked up so much they are going to get, you know, they kind of they kind of get out of control. And so in that situation, we really got to be watching each other's backs. We really got to be paying attention to what's going on around us. I'm very comfortable with my crew. Uh, Robin here is the producer. He's a smart guy. Uh, Quete over here, he's like ice. 
Yeah, you don't get no reaction out of him. He's just like that. And a lot of times, like, quit, they're behind you. You know, I gotta go, I got, but he's, he's, he's ice. I started diving uh, off California when I was nine years old. That's uh, quite a few years back now. And I remember uh, one of the most exciting things for me was to get up on the bow of the boat as we made our way across to the Channel Islands or to Catalina and uh, look over the bow of the boat and about every 200 yards, a big blue shark, nice big beautiful blue shark would actually, we'd almost cross right over the top of it and the blue shark would roll over and look at me with that eye and then boom, take off. And it was so exciting to me at the age of nine years old, I can remember that so clearly. And uh, you almost never see that anymore. Um, illegal long lining uh, has, has literally devastated shark populations. Uh, it's estimated that over 100 million sharks worldwide are taken every year now, mostly for their fins. The rest of the sharks just thrown right back in the water. And out of that 100 million, they estimate 40 million are blue sharks. So the blue sharks have really been devastated and they're absolutely magnificent, beautiful animals. Probably the prettiest shark uh, it, that swims. Uh, long, sleek, blue animal. Yeah, I see him. I knew we would find sharks, but I had no idea so many would be coming at us nonstop from every angle. Okay, Robin, don't worry, I got your back. We're keeping an eye on it. With each encounter, I'm learning even more about these amazing predators, how they interact with me and each other. They're so subtle, but the clues are here. After a three hour boat ride into the Pacific, our pro shark guide, Chuck White, has put us on a promising spot using satellite images to locate warm water. I keep my mind focused on the task ahead to attract and interact with a true noble savage, the short fin mako. But even with this much preparation, we're just tiny specks in this vast blue wilderness. And I worry, will all this effort pay off? California sea lion probably actually just saw the boat from a distance and cruised on over. They know what uh, fishing boats are all about. Uh, we're not actually fishing, but I'm sure he'll uh, he'll enjoy the chum and he'll probably try to take the uh, bait from Manny. Uh, believe it or not, a California sea lion, a full-grown California sea lion, will eat small blue sharks. They'll swim right in there with them. And in fact, uh, a great white can't really even catch a sea lion if the sea lion sees the great white first. They're ambush predators, they're going to come exploding up and grab something before it sees them. But if the sea lion actually has eye contact first, there's almost no way they, they can uh, actually catch a uh, sea lion. They're far too agile, far too acrobatic, they can turn on a dime. Well, my job out there is to get the action as close as possible to Manny. Uh, I've got a wide angle camera lens on it so I can be two, two feet away from him and still see the, the shark and Manny. Uh, if I back off, I back off to about four feet. Uh, and still, they pretty much fill up the screen. But uh, you can get right up in there, you know, six inches away from it and still get, get enough, uh, enough of the wide angle to see the, uh, the animal's head and the sure. mouth. And so you gotta be pretty close in there. You want to hand me my camera? Let me get set up here. It's amazing how far things have come in uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, actually, even the last five years, it's amazing. But uh, just think what Jacques Cousteau and those guys would have done to have a system like this. Uh, here we've got like an hour's worth of video and uh, a battery that'll go all day uh, and, and uh, total control over the camera. Uh, it's, it's really amazing how good these uh, systems are. They're so state of the art. I settled in for what I know will be a long wait. Mako sharks don't just come charging up from the deep. You have to give them a good reason to appear. And then, if there's nothing to keep them, they will disappear just as fast. By making noise as I shred each skipjack tuna, the sharks will actually think I'm feeding and will attempt to steal my food from me. But I have to pace myself. 
If the sharks don't show up for an hour or two, I can actually wear myself out chunking these frozen skipjack. A shun bucket that Shuck White has tied off to the boat will spread a slick for miles. But for now, below us only clear blue water and strange jellyfish-like creatures that live in the open sea. charging straight in together, a five-footer and a small one. I am thrilled to see them, and these are only the first to arrive. We are 60 miles offshore and water thousands of feet deep, hoping to encounter the noble savage of the open seas, the shortfin mako. And it seems we may have hit the jackpot. Within 20 minutes of steady shumming, two beautiful makos have charged onto the scene. They're sizing us up, and I can almost read their minds. They want to steal my fish and then rip us to pieces. Two healthy makos are stalking us. For now, they keep their distance. Two of them. I can't bring luck. And then they disappear into the gloom like ghosts. Two, five, four, five foot makos. Unbelievable. Really inquisitive, real careful sharks when they came in. They're still around. I think they've got friends. She's only a pup, and she's totally fearless. Her inexperience, aggression, and lack of fear make her far more dangerous than you think. She may be only three feet long, but this is a perfect little killer. She could take a bite out of you the size of a grapefruit before you even knew what happened. But she's so beautiful, and I wonder what her world is like. The competition for food must make her even more prone to rushing in for a bite. She seems agitated. The shum has her totally worked up. In a flash, things get really dangerous. Instinctively, she goes for my legs. And I lose her for a second. This is how the Mako takes down big game. And for her, I am big game. Right 
She seems worried about taking fish from my hand, but I continue shumming, bringing her in closer. This is a view you will never forget. The business end of the most efficient killer that swims. The threads on her dorsal fins are actually a type of parasite. She may be the first to show up at the party, but this pup is not alone. Soon, much larger makos will appear. After a three-hour boat ride, we're 60 miles off the coast of California. Our pro shark guide, Chuck White, using years of experience and satellite images, has put us on a Mako hotspot. Uh, basically, the shark thinks I'm gonna be eating these fish. Sharks are attracted to other sharks eating, so I'm gonna pretend I'm a predator out here, eating fish just like one of them. Shark! Right Coming right at you, right here. Already, three makos have come charging in Two of them. after only 20 minutes of shumming. The first two have disappeared, and now a female pup, only three feet long, is keeping us more than busy. She has worked up fearless and ready to bite anything she can. I can't help but to admire how bold and dangerous she is. A perfect little killer. She is showing us whose neighborhood this really is. She's constantly charging the cameraman, as if to say, stay away, I found this, and it's mine. I'll kill you if I need to. continue shredding the skipjack to bring her closer. This little Mako is on fire, fighting everything she can, including our buoy. I carefully roll her on her back and she is totally unfazed. As she bites the tail of the skipjack tuna I am holding, she shakes it with incredible violence. It's amazing that such a small shark is capable of inflicting such a terrible wound. And we know full well what she would do to us if we drop our guard. Older, more mature sharks will usually move more carefully. But this little shark is inexperienced and excited past the point of caution. I am worried about the camera crew as she looks for an opening but she makes her way back to the skipjack tuna I'm holding, giving me the opportunity to gently lift her. <laughs> the high catching a big angle. The baby Mako 
was fantastic. But this pup is nothing compared to what is now waiting for us out there. Chuck, a big Mako coming in over there. Man, that's a killing machine. Look at the size of that thing. That's one of the biggest ones I've seen out here this year. We're ready, but will it be more than we can handle? Shark! Red! Coming right at you, right here. My quest to understand the short fin mako has already produced results. But there are more than makos in the deep ocean. And soon we're joined by yet another hungry pelagic shark. The small mako has disappeared. And next to arrive on the scene is a cautious six to seven foot blue shark. Everybody stay real calm, don't move. Stay at well, stay quick, and nobody move. Drop the line, nobody move. Carefully circling us, this shark is more mature and experienced and won't just come rushing in. Instead, it will take its time and will approach us when it feels comfortable. Chuck, yeah. let us know if you see any coming from this direction. Oh, yeah. I got your back. With three of us in the water, this blue is very cautious, inspecting us carefully. Get another fish and tell Cuete, stay behind me. Finally, the blue comes to me and takes a bite of the fish. As I stroke its belly, he does a roll and then sticks his patrol fins straight down. This is a clear warning to us. He means business and will attack if we push him too far. Yeah, I'm sure the Makos are going to come back, but uh, they're working on a blue shark. We haven't seen how big it is yet, but uh, we're getting lots of variety now. The blue shark is now much bolder, closely eyeballing each one of us. Even with so much shum in the water, he is still taking his time. Sharks rarely just charge in and bite. They want to make sure of what they're getting themselves into. We are three large animals to this blue shark, and we could be dangerous. Or we could be the next meal. This blue shark is taking all this in carefully. He seems so calm, and the beauty of this whole scene is surreal. It's almost hypnotic. Unlike Makos, blue sharks have a membrane that covers their eyes when they bite. This protects the eye if the prey fights back. shark is now determined to take the fish from me, taking a bite and spinning right back around for another. This is how a shark dismantles its prey, by shaking their head violently from side to side. They saw right through flesh and bone. Falls was left of the skipjack tuna down. But as he returns, he suddenly explodes away from the scene. Something has scared him, and we are on the alert. That's a Mako. Mako scared him. This big blue shark thought he was uh, pretty tough stuff. 
until a much larger Mako cruised in, and he, he shot out of here like a scared puppy. A serious Mako has appeared. What a magnificent predator, well over 200 pounds. This shark, a female gets right in my face without hesitation, as if to say, okay, who has the fish? Hand it over or else. She takes a tour of the scene, eyeballing each one of us. This is the wrong time to back up. But then, just as suddenly, she disappears into the blue. This is about as wild a rodeo as I've ever seen, and we're right in the middle of it. I got tangled up, I had fed him, and, I, and he started rolling around. I got tangled up in a rope, and he started taking down, but I had a real nice hand feed on him. Our adventure, 60 miles offshore from California, is proving more savage and more wild than any of us expected. We are constantly on the defense as a tag team of Mako and Blue Sharks appear from below, challenging us as they lay claim to the fish I'm hacking with my knife. Each visit seems to bring a larger and more aggressive shark. With more than one species surrounding us, I'm learning even more about them. But how far can we push our luck? The blue shark fled the scene when a much larger mako appeared. Makos can be very territorial and will kill blue sharks, like a lion kills a hyena. If the blue shark doesn't show a proper respect, this mature male seems very calm. And I hitch a ride. The mako doesn't seem to mind at all. But I can't let him take me too deep. Big blue shark coming in. Chuck, are they seeing this? It's right behind him there. Our friend the blue shark is back. Its urge to feed is overriding its fear of the mako. It munches on a skipjack tuna I'm holding like a corn cob. This shark is now completely comfortable with us and focuses on the skipjack. I can even push him around without much trouble. just when things seem to be calm and relaxed. That's usually when the unexpected happens. The blue shark rolls in the float line, almost tangling both of us. This could have gone very wrong. Luckily, the blue slips free. I got tangled up. I hand fed him, and, I, and he started rolling around. I got tangled up in a rope, and he started taking down. But I had a real nice hand feed on him. This is about as wild a rodeo as uh, I've ever seen, and we're right in the middle of it. Man, he just got tangled up with a blue shark here in our tow line. And uh, I tell you, it was uh, pretty crazy acting. I know, but The blue shark has left the scene, and the large male mako moves back in. He seems determined, and heads straight for the buoy, and the shredded fish hanging on the stringer. As he works over the bait, I swim to him. I want to feel his power. These animals are solid muscle. To hold one like this feels like hugging a rubber-coated rocket. He takes off with me, and we are literally flying through the water. 
I can't believe the power and speed this animal has. But he is beating me up with his tail. And sooner or later, I will have to let go. And that's the tricky part. He may lash out in anger. There is simply no telling what he will do. I can read every book on sharks, but nothing will ever reveal this animal's spirit to me like this encounter. Chuck, a big mako coming in over there. Man, that's a killing machine. Look at the size of that thing. That's one of the biggest ones I've seen out here this year. My adventure, 60 miles offshore from California, has given me more insight into the behavior of blue and mako sharks than I could ever imagine. The makos are fierce, but I can sense their keen intelligence as they look directly into my eyes, and I wonder how they perceive us. They must sense our intelligence as well. Well, so far, we've probably had six different mako sharks, including a really nice five foot plus mako, probably 180, maybe 200 pounds, uh, that Manny took for a ride. Uh, but who knows what could show up? A five, six, seven hundred pound mako could easily show up. We've got so much chum out there, and Manny's making so much noise, uh, chunking these fish up, these skipjack tuna up. Anything could show up. And uh, so we've got new batteries, new tapes, and both uh, underwater cameras. It's time to get back in. And Chuck, if you want to hand me that. Chuck, a big mako coming in over there. Man, that's a killing machine. Look at the size of that thing. That's one of the biggest ones I've seen out here this year. This is a huge mako, at least 400, maybe 500 pounds. And he is confident and fearless. After he eats a fish in my hand, are we just the next meal? You can really sense his maturity and intelligence. I wonder what he's thinking as he studies us. I am awestruck with this animal. This shark has probably never seen a human. I am fascinated with how he perceives us and reacts to us. But he has my total respect. You can only imagine what he could do to a human. But to complicate things even more, our friend, the blue shark, is back. And suddenly, things get out of control. As they both begin to compete for the fish, they start ramming into all three of us. As if a switch had been thrown and they are now in kill mode. We have to keep our wits. This is no joke. This is now a deadly situation. I offer my fish to the mako and grab him by the pectoral fins. I have so much respect for this animal. I want to feel his spirit, his power. His girth is huge and he feels as heavy as a rhino. I let him pull me around for a moment, but as I release him, he calmly circles back around, unfazed, and takes my last fish. It's time to get out of the water. We have pushed our luck far enough. We're out of bait. <laughs> I can't ask for more. I've never seen a day, what a day like this. Full of mako, full of blue sharks. This is just unbelievable. Is this savage wild? This is the savage wild in the ocean. Unbelievable. This is the savage wild. You guys better get out of there before you're missing a foot yeah, yeah. or two. Today was, was maybe the most beautiful, the most breathtaking, the most exciting. And, and the most action. I couldn't believe it. Hey, this was my best shark day ever. Really? Yeah, ever. This, you, you don't understand how good this, this was for me. I'm glad to hear that. I said, I said, I re I said records here today. Uh, this, coming from you, I know that means something. Yeah. No, no, I've had a million shark days, a million, and this was my best shark day ever, man. I cannot believe what a day we had. Uh, that guy is a tank. I mean, when you see him underwater, you cannot believe he is this wide. It's like this, this wide. 
He's a well-behaved shark, but he'll kill you in about two seconds. And, and there's no emotion. You can tell he's just a cold-blooded killer, but spectacular beauty, spectacular. You know, uh, the mako shark is high on the IQ. That's a very smart shark. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. There look at him coming in right in here. Everything I've learned about sharks, I have learned by direct interaction. Moving farther offshore, we get ready for the next dive. I'm hoping to lure in true pelagic or open ocean shark like a white tip or silky. But we could be surprised by anything. This it, John? Yeah, that's it. You know, it's funny, Manny, everybody thinks if you fall in the ocean, sharks are just gonna come and eat you, and here we've been yeah, filling like, the ocean been full been trying, of chum. We've been trying to get eaten all day. <laughs> we've been trying to get eaten all day. Sharks come, they look at us, and they swim away. <laughs> I guess there's something wrong with us. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, uh, and if, maybe you could just hand me my camera over the side too, over there. I settle in and begin chunking up the fish. We have already used up so much fish that I will need to pace myself. Below me, a beautiful school of Jack Crabell is passing by. down to see if I can hand feed them, but they move away. I'm running low on fish. Wow, huge school of Jacobels. Huge school of them. I suddenly realize this may be our only opportunity to spear a few oily, bloody jackravel. I know the sharks will go wild for them. But as I drop below with my pole spear, they move deeper and then keep their distance if they know exactly what I'm up to. Chasing them is no use. So I head back up for a breath. With only a pole spear, taking one of these fish will be tricky. I managed to get within range but the fish moves away as I let my spear fly. I will have to make do with the fish we have left to bring in the sharks. Below the school of Jack Crabell, a sandbar shark is slowly rising up from the deep. This is one of the sharks that is at home on the reef for miles at sea. I continue to chunk up Bonita. But after 30 minutes, the action seems to have tapered off. So we head back to the boat to take a break and move to another spot. search for large oceanic sharks continues. We have now spent hours drifting with the Gulf Stream, chunking up Bonita, and hours of this can be exhausting. But with each dive, there is the excitement of the unknown. 
What surprises are waiting for us? Hoping to encounter a monster pelagic shark. We are now drifting miles out at sea with the Gulf Stream. The water below us is almost a thousand feet deep. Large oceanic sharks are constantly hunting these waters, as well as the duskies and sandbar sharks we have already encountered. We will stay together and stay focused. Big sharks have a habit of sneaking up on you when you are distracted, as one of our crew soon learns. Once again, we gear up for the next dive. It is now late in the afternoon, and this is actually when the sharks begin to prowl for food. I have decided to drift free untethered from the boat for this dive. Okay. What we're doing here, our uh, previous technique was we were latching them to the boat, giving them about 70 feet of line, just letting them drift with us to keep them close to the boat, keep them safe if things were to get out of hand. Now we're just letting the ball run free. We put them out there with the buoy because uh, now this west wind is pushing this boat like a parachute. And what happens is it pushes us and it pushes us off any ledge structure, anything that we want to stay on with the north current. It's pushing us right off it, so this way they can stay in the hot zone longer and hopefully get more interaction with the sharks. A silky shark cruises in to investigate. Common in the Gulf of Mexico, it is much more rare to see them on the east coast. This is a true pelagic shark, always found miles at sea in the deep water. They are called silky sharks because they have fine scales and their skin looks smooth. They are powerful sharks and can grow to 10 feet. Silkies are easy to spot with a short patrol fins and torpedo shape. I continue to work the fish as a silky investigates a stringer. Silky continues to gain confidence. This is a perfect example of how cautious most sharks really are. They almost never rush in and attack. But it moves in closer, and the Silky doesn't seem to mind. Finally, deciding that the shredded fish hanging from the stringer is worth taking an experimental bite. I am now down to shredding small mackerel, when suddenly deep below us, we catch a glimpse of a giant hammerhead shark. Like Jurassic Park, 
we get a visit from a real dinosaur. A huge great hammerhead, and there's nothing between him and us but water. Our silky continues to keep us company. Our attention is on the hammerhead. An incredible predator. This monster shark is determined to leave with a price. Miles offshore, drifting north with the Gulf Stream. We have already encountered our first true pelagic shark. A five foot silky is growing braver by the minute. A large sandbar shark is also slowly circling. And deep below us, we get a glimpse of a massive great hammerhead before it disappears into the gloom. Silky seems bored with what I have to offer. He circles continuously as if hoping I will finally bring out the main course. Silky Shark remains cautious. Shine away from me at the last second. And although this is a beautiful predator, I'm not here for five foot Silky Sharks. I'm looking for monsters. If you wonder why we wear full wetsuits in warm water, this is why. The little jellyfish near the surface is just one of the thousands we encounter out here. Some are harmless, and some will put you on your knees. As Quetta swings his camera back to the group, a surprise, Mr. T is back. While he is distracted with a jellyfish, the great hammerhead suddenly swims up behind Robin Bird, sending chills down his spine for not seeing such a huge animal sneaking up behind him. are the longest of all predatory sharks, great whites get much heavier. But the great hammerhead is a gigantic shark, reaching lengths of 20 feet. At 12 feet long and 800 pounds, this one is very impressive, but they can get much bigger.
what an adventure. We have now seen six species of large dangerous sharks. And that huge hammerhead is still lurking out there. Fascinated by how much respect the other sharks give them. They know Mr. T would just love to eat them. Six miles offshore in a thousand feet of water, drifting north with the Gulf Stream, we are being slowly circled by a huge predator, and he's getting braver with each pass. A massive great hammerhead! 12 foot, 800 pound monster swimming around us like this. Get a little bit more. All right. The great hammerhead is circling much closer. I feel he's planning to make a move. Eyeing each one of us carefully. The open ocean is a wild and savage place. There is no mercy here. And it pays to be big with a mouthful of teeth. These huge sharks can turn on a dime. Like this. Many spearfishers have been startled to have a great hammerhead pass by and then suddenly turn and ram into them, sometimes over and over. He sniffs the shredded fish in my hand. another complete circle around us. This huge animal is worried of us, and this is how they stay alive. You can see the powerful muscles rippling along his body as he swims by. Finally, he decides to take the fish from my hand, then swims away, gulping it down. then turns and rushes directly at the camera, passing calmly while looking into the lens. What an incredible thrill it is to share the water with this magnificent animal that may one day vanish from many waters. Great hammerheads have been reduced by over 80% according to some studies. Their huge fins are prized for shark fin soup and they are an easy catch for the international longliners. If I can pass my knowledge about these animals onto you and help you understand them, it is better for them and us. Yeah, we heard that one. What a beautiful animal. Hey, John, come on. Yep. Real, really careful, really cautious. Man, he got, got a chance to hand feed him. But, uh, oh, he uh, stayed with us for quite a while while two other sharks were working us as well. Yeah, we had a scent bar, a silky, and a great hammer here at the end. Six species. Hey! Wow. <laughs> I was just I was just out of fresh bait too, man. Got I had one little come on in here. Piece of uh, uh, Jack. It had hardly any any juice left in it. I was like, oh, I'm just getting dust yeah. off of it, dust yeah. off of it. And then I thought, please come and get it. Take please come and get it. And he finally went like this, and it was such a it had a little rag. I finally had to just get my hand out of it because he was, you know, a great hammerhead has a big mouth. Yeah. Unlike a scalp of hammerhead. Yeah. yeah. He sucked it right down too, man. Oh yeah. Whew. So this is so we're so far out that we have like uh, sharks that live on the reef and so forth, and sharks in the ocean mixing it together. When I saw a suki, I said, "No, we're out there. We're far out there. They're, you know, yeah. coming in contact with." That's a rare that sight. Hammerhead was gorgeous. He was a beautiful animal. Yeah, but how much? How much did he weigh? He was massive, massive. Dude, a twelve foot hammerhead could weigh six hundred pounds, eight hundred pounds. Oh, at least yeah. that. At least eight hundred. It depend. Yeah, depending on the you know. Yeah, the, he, his girth was, put him on his the was massive. Yeah, exactly. It, it's hard. I, all I know is when he. Drop down, I can see the he was wide. Yeah. The sea hammerheads are bigger this way. Yeah. So he was real big this way, and even sideways, it was do, really wide. Do you think that was the same one that surprised me earlier? I don't know. This was a male. That was a male. That was a I noticed oh, yeah. it was a male. I did I did catch that. But it could have been the same one. Yeah. Sharks are complicated and unpredictable. 
Yes, they're very dangerous. Uh, you could come out here and get attacked. But you can also spend the entire day out here shumming for them, putting blood in the water, trying to attract them, and find nothing. At any moment today, we could be in the water with five different species of sharks. Um, we were approached by bull sharks, samba sharks, dusky sharks, Caribbean reef sharks, silky sharks, and at the end, a massive great hammerhead to, to end the day. What an experience! Today we're going out into the blue ocean, way offshore on Florida's east coast. Here, large coastal and pelagic sharks are common and are often found in mixed groups. The possibility is endless. This is a vast, mysterious, blue, savage place. So even though we're five, six miles offshore, water's 100 to 150 feet deep, we could see anything. So you could see anything. We could see anything. 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 Well, actually, the water will be even deeper than that, and it will start at that depth, but we'll go offshore very quickly. So you never know what will come up from the depths. There's actually been a couple of uh, thresher sharks spotted, too, in the last couple Fantastic. of weeks. Fantastic. You know, we, we've been in the water with threshers, and we can't get close enough to them. They're really shy. They can sense us, and they come in because they, they uh, you know, are, are interested in what we're doing, but then as we approach them, they just back right off, and we can't get within camera range. They're real shy. Oh, uh, really? Real yeah, shy. I've only yeah. seen two, and they've been very far away from me, too. You yeah. know, I didn't try to approach them, but they, yeah. they skirted off, too. Right. Uh, this is a reality, so I, I'm, my mind is out there. I'm, uh, it's kind of, I don't like to talk about what's going to happen until it happens, you know. This is reality, this is dangerous, this is super high adventure. And, um, you know, I don't have much to say until I got something to talk about. But this could be uh, tremendous out here. The potential for incredible encounters with some of the most dangerous sharks uh, is about to happen. The variety of sharks in Florida waters is fantastic and surprising encounters are not uncommon. Yeah, about uh, three days ago, they saw about five or six great whites out on uh, up north of Juneau. And that, that's rare. I mean, we see them maybe once, twice a year tops, and they saw five or six in one day. That, that's pretty amazing. My best ca underwater cameraman, Quete, is phenomenal. And the reason he's so good is he can't see and he can't hear. So no matter what happens, he stays calm as a cucumber, cool as ice, and then asks us what happened at the end of the day, and the footage is awesome. Ignorance is bliss, man. Quete is so blind, I had to buy him this mask. These are uh, readers inside here. They're like, they're like bottle, this is bottoms of... Old setup. <laughs> this is old setup. This is old setup. And he could see nothing with this. So he had to go with these. These are three and a quarter readers that are bonded to the uh, lens. Now he can actually see his what's going on with the camera. Can't see anything else, but he can see what's going on with the camera. That's awesome. Three miles out. We are now in federal waters. It is illegal to hand feed sharks while diving in Florida state waters. And we want to be sure we are well outside the limit. I'm gonna grab a fish and a knife. I'm gonna be working. The current's gonna be going this way. So everybody gets up current of the blood, the fish and everything. So whatever dangerous sharks gonna come up, they're gonna come down current towards us. And that way, you know, 
we're not gonna get surprised from behind. So just keep that in mind. Another thing too is you're either gonna put yourself in danger or you're gonna scare the shark. Those are two possibilities. So best thing to do is just everybody get behind me, a foot behind me while I work like that. And then once he's engaged, then you can surround him looking around okay. and then you can get any angle. Manny, if things get out of control, what's the plan? I'll slow down the, the knife action. That slow, uh, uh, they'll start unwinding. A shark can only stay at a high peak so long. They usually get like at that a craziness and they don't stay there very long. And then they start to unwind and they start getting shyer and back to normal instead of further and further away from you. So the idea is to keep them pretty intense as long as possible. We have no idea what we will encounter. My goal is to observe a mix of species interacting together. Behind you, man! To see if they establish a pecking order. This is serious business. As thrilling as it is, the level of danger for our crew is extreme. I am cruising six miles of Florida's east coast, directly into the Gulf Stream searching for the most dangerous sharks found in the Atlantic Ocean. This is serious business. Anything can show up. That's exactly what I love about working with sharks in the open sea. It can go from boredom to sheer terror in an instant. So be ready for anything. Before we enter the water, there is a great deal of preparation. We rig a large float at the end of a 100-foot line and put several loops in it for arms to go through. This keeps us together, an up current from the shum line. I will also hang a fish stringer from the float. We may smile and joke on the way out, but now we're more serious and always a little bit nervous. This is stepping into the unknown. We have absolutely no way of knowing what may come charging up from the depths. I'm gonna need a, yeah, and as soon as I have a deep one, I'm gonna need one. As we gear up, a large sea turtle is keeping a curious eye on us. make my way down the float line. There are many ways to attract sharks, but I have my own proven method. Using my knife, I will chunk up the fish. A shark. The sound of my knife shopping and grating on a fish sounds like another shark feeding. And this, along with the shaman creating, is an irresistible lure. We settle in. Sometimes it can take hours before a shark appears. First fish to show up is a barjack. Next, a spotted tuning. Locals call them bonita. They're, they're hit right here on my chunk. Okay. It zips around us, picking up pieces of shum. Mike Newman and Johnny Polito will try to catch as many tuning as possible. It's gonna be a long day, and we will need fresh fish to keep the sharks interested. Next, like a ghost, a gorgeous wahoo appears. This is one of the most amazing predators of the open sea. They are like swimming tigers. Few fish can escape them. But suddenly he darts off, and this is why. A big sandbar shark is rising from 200 feet to greet us. To see a large shark in the open sea is hypnotic. So beautiful, so ancient, and so dangerous. The 
Sandbar sharks are one of the most successful shark species and are found almost anywhere in the Atlantic where the water is warm. They like to hunt dropouts and bridges. They are rare over 200 pounds, and this one is as big as they get. They aren't considered dangerous by most divers. But tell them to the spearfishers that have had them snapping in their face. The sandbar shark is only the first to show up. And like stoking a fire, I continue shredding fish. I want to see a crazy mixture of sharks show up. Pelagic and large coastal sharks. How they interact is fascinating to me. That's how you do it. But our team needs to stay in constant alert. One mistake here could easily cost one of us our lives. Six miles off Florida's east coast, I am on the hunt for dangerous coastal and pelagic sharks, using my own technique to call them in. I want to see how they interact with each other. Is there a pecking order based on size or species? So far, the only arrival has been a lone sandbar shark. But as the shump slick spreads and we drift north with the Gulf Stream, fantastic encounters are bound to happen. The sandbar shark is acting very cautious. And this is normal for most sharks. I continue to shred fish, hoping to bring him closer. Suddenly, below us, a fantastic school of Jack Cravel <laughs> appears. Jack Cravel are powerful predatory fish, common in Florida waters. The sandbar seems content to cruise among them. sandbar cruising real slow. He hasn't really done a lot yet. He's really checking the area. He seems very wary, which is normal. Captain Johnny Polito hooks up a jack. And this gets the attention of the sandbar. It's over there on the next to see. Give up, man. He's getting chased by a shark right now. Yeah, there's now. a shark right behind him. After 30 minutes of shredding fish, no other sharks have showed up, and we decided to move north. That's why I'd rather take you up there. We can do a long two-mile drift. That's what we need to do. Yeah. If they were here, if they were here. You'd see them instantly. Man, you got some free dive skills. Put it in that black tub, please. Yep. Nothing is guaranteed in the ocean. I know this more than anyone. The sharks could swarm us on the next dive, or it could be a bust. I have to carefully pace myself. Shredding these fish is tiring. Take you up here where there's a nice long grip and get you right there. Right there, okay. is clear and clouds of baitfish begin to appear. Suddenly, 
a Caribbean reef shark appears. Followed by another. These sharks are difficult to bring in close, unless they are attacking. They have definitely been the culprit on numerous attacks. Tend to stay below us and snap up the fish pieces raining down, cruising up to within a few feet to check us out. We have now seen two species of large coastal sharks, sandbar and Caribbean reef sharks. And as we continue to drift north, the chances of getting to observe a mixed group in near feeding frenzy conditions is increasing rapidly. I want to see how they interact, how they behave in a group. By seeing this myself, I will learn things that no book will teach me. Six miles off the Florida coast, I'm hoping to observe a mix of dangerous sharks feeding together to see how they interact. Both sandbar and Caribbean reef sharks have made an appearance. And as we drift north with the Gulf Stream, we are moving through dangerous shark territory. Yeah. Oh, cool. Here, we got him right here. Come on, here, get the water. Got shark? Got, 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 got a big spool of jacks. Here, give me some of that bait right there. You guys need to get in. All right. Let's do it. It's going to be sharks if we can get in. They say the third time is a charm. On our third spot, the action is picking up. A bull shark rushes up to investigate. Bull shark, he's coming in hot. Let, let me get him hot. Everybody just hold the position, relax. Let me get him hot. One of the most feared sharks that swims in the sea. They are unpredictable and vicious, and almost never alone. My senses are telling me that something is about to happen. Sure enough, two more bulls show up. Like a pack of dogs, watch as they become braver. Now that there are three, they will feed off each other's aggression. The bull sharks are heating up, and suddenly, an awesome encounter. A 10-foot dusky shark cruises right up to us. These are amazing open ocean sharks, and they have a huge mouth for their size. But the bull sharks are too aggressive for him, and he leaves. The bull sharks are now coming much closer. They have a habit of keeping their distance, and then rushing in, jaws snapping in your face, and then suddenly becoming wary again. They are one of the most difficult sharks to work with. Grabs a string of fish hanging from our buoy and rockets away with it. Oh, the ice foot is. Did you get that? Oh, wow. <laughs> the 
minutes later, they are gone. They all left. Are we past the area? Yep. Yeah, we've gone out through. We drifted out. If you just jump in, we'll run back through. We'll pick them up again. Our adventure is still unfolding. So far, we've seen four species of sharks. Sandbar, Caribbean Reef, Bull, and Dusky. But the day is not over. We have hours of sunlight left. And the wild blue ocean is full of surprises. We're so far out that we have like uh, sharks that live on the reef and so forth, and sharks in the ocean mixing them together. When I saw a suki, I said, man, we're out there. We're far out there.